Um, Never. Anyway, let's have a look at the papers with theologian and uh, social media experts yeah. worth pointing out Slash at the addict. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And comedian Ian Wright, it's good to see both of you good this see morning. You. Uh, we'll start with the Mail on Sunday, should we? Uh, and why, <laughs> why Vicky, <laughs> is, uh, is Ed Miliband in this new outfit? It's very interesting. Um, the Conservatives <laughs> have launched the headliner. Um, Mystic Ed and his new... crystal balls. Yes, it's Mystic Ed and his crystal balls. It's a YouTube attack that Cameron's going to be launching this week as the kind of unofficial start to the election battle. And uh, it's uh, based on the fact that the Conservatives are saying that Ed Miliband is the worst ever clairvoyant. And the video is going to consist of him making these predictions about the economy that will then all be false. So um, in, in my take on it, I would say it's interesting to see social media coming to the fore already of uh, the next election. So I wonder whether this election will actually be fought a lot on social media. Uh, which as, is, as, as a bit like the first Obama campaign was. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So we'll be seeing, you know, YouTube, Twitter, things like that really playing a role. Um, I, I really like Ed Miliband, so I think this is... Uh, pretty poor taste and I don't like it but I think it's interesting to see social media kind of crashing in even at this early stage into the election battle. I, I mean think the headline it's... underneath, sorry I was just going to say, Donna. it does say now it's personal. Do you think it is a personal attack? Well it is pretty personal. I think it's mockery which um, I think if he wants to, if Cameron wants to take on Ed Miliband he should take him on, you know, in a serious light, politician to politician, not trying to diminish somebody by um, making fun of them. I don't want to see this out of my politicians either. I mean, these are the people I'm voting for to run my country, to protect us, to look after us and to keep us secure. I don't want to see Ed Miliband dressed up with his crystal <laughs> balls uh, in, in an attack by the opposition. I just think it's madness. And this is going to get worse, because then, of course, Labour will come yeah, back with something. It's like children in the playground. Yeah. It feels a bit desperate to me. If yeah. they're desperate enough to do this to, to Ed Miliband, they must be really scared about but what it, he offers. But in one sense, it's no different from what we've seen over the decades. Is it with the TV campaigns, with the poster campaigns, doing all this? And certainly Labour did it against the, the Conservatives last mm. time around, those images of the Prime Minister mm. that were being used on. And Blair with He's, the demon eyes. I mean, that yeah, so it's, in that sense, it's not new. Is it? It's no. just a new medium, just I suppose. New medium, and now, yeah. now they can get into everybody's uh, smartphone and really. And if Boris, them. of course, runs for PM at any time, it will just go <laughs> over the scale. <laughs> well, it? Yes. it will just yes. go mad. If that happens, we shall wait and see. Um, let's have a look at this health story in the Mail on Sunday, Ian. Yeah, it's, um, it's really, really interesting, actually. The multivitamins are actually going to cut breast cancer. Uh, 48,000 women develop breast cancer in a yearly period in this country, um, and 8,000 women between the age of 50 and 79 took this test. And taking the pills daily uh, reduces uh, the chance of getting breast cancer by 30%. Which, wow. is, which is massive figures, really. And what I found quite interesting was they're not particularly finding cures in new drugs, they're actually finding prevention and cure in drugs that are already available, and in this mm. case, multivitamins, which I found fascinating. And also what I found fascinating, at the age of 2013, that it's taken this long to actually come up with the fact that a simple multivitamin mm. can cut breast mm. cancer by, by 30%. I know they, they, there's all the, a massive amount of research going on. It's mm. all, all down to sort of blood markers and all sorts yeah. of things. It's tricky, but they, Ooh, they say in here also that women who take those multivitamins are also more likely to be healthy people, mm. health conscious. So mm. um, I guess that's worth bearing in mind that if you're already you know, thinking about health, thinking about a healthy lifestyle and therefore taking the vitamins, you might skew the results slightly. But there is some advice to take in mind though here saying that uh, we advise women receiving treatment for breast cancer to speak to their oncologist before taking any supplements as some can interfere yeah. with treatment yeah. so it's not uh, for everyone. No, always always uh, worth pointing but it's out. I think it's exciting news you know for oh, the yeah. ever developing yeah. research of cancer research so I think it's really exciting news. Any hope is good. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at the sun this morning. Um, uh, oh, uh, Gloria de Piero, um, this sort of topless nice story. Nice pronunciation. Which, <laughs> I don't know if it's wrong. <laughs> again for us. <laughs> no. Piero. <laughs> yes, this is um, the uh, shadow minister for women and equalities, and uh, she recently, um, well, it recently came to light that she'd had some pictures taken of her as a teenager when she was about 15, topless, and it was to try and raise some cash because she was from a family that didn't have very much money. And uh, this story came to the fore. There were a few uh, people that were threatening to publish these pictures. And she's written a fantastic piece today in The Sun, really owning the fact that she did that, but saying that that is why she can connect with ordinary people, that she knows what it's like to be, uh, you know, struggling financially, and that she realises that the Westminster bubble can just seem like another planet for mm. many families so she's really taking this and saying you know I own the fact I did it I, I'm not proud of it but it shows that I know what it's like to struggle and uh, I can connect with ordinary people. So in today's day and age and everything that uh, people are putting on these various websites and 
What does it really matter? Top, who cares, really? Yeah. I think it'd be interesting, though, know, if those pictures weren't going to come out, would she have still done the story? Doubtful. Well, no, so, that's true. You know, it, I, just, I, mean, uh, I just think we see so much these days. We should be. Yeah. And hey, you only have to go on a European 15, holiday. Really. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. What does it matter? Yeah, it's a brave stance, though, I think, just to kind of really own it and also to say she knows how it feels to not be able to pay the bills. So yeah, I respect sure. her for that. Yeah. We'll take a short break, you two, because we're going to be back with more papers for you in just a moment. Vicky and Ian are taking us through the papers this morning, and we all, we all look forward to a Christmas lunch, don't we? Mm. It's, it's got to be, it, it is lovely. My, my <laughs> mother does. We all go back home for a family Christmas. She has a fantastic Christmas <laughs> dinner. Uh, but now, <laughs> We need to share it with our canines. It's amazing. I'm sure pet lovers everywhere will uh, rejoice about this. Um, this Christmas, when we sit down to our Christmas dinner, if you've got a uh, canine family member, uh, instead of just giving them little bits of your dinner, you'll be able to buy them their own special um, canine Christmas meal. It's on sale at Waitrose for £2.49. Apparently, it doesn't include Brussels sprouts. She's a show. But um, allegedly, I mean, not that we'll ever know, because we're not likely to get our faces in there and try it but um <laughs> apparently it's uh, you know organic turkey and goose and organic vegetables and uh, it's the way to uh, to help your little canine friend celebrate but christmas why can't they just have some of yours yeah i know i don't know <laughs> the whole thing's just ludicrous <laughs> because i mean firstly the dog's not going to be able to tell you, <laughs> right? The dog's not going to be able to go, amazing. This one looks Christmas. quite festive. Look at that. It looks uh, quite... I suppose you know if it's a good dinner if he just rolls over and falls asleep in the corner, but that happens to yeah. my dog every day anyway. <laughs> so it's... Do you think it might actually just be regular food dressed well, up in well, a special can at three times the price? Probably. Turkey, potatoes, carrots, beans, beans, apples and cranberry sauce. It's just food. I'm not even what? sure if a dog would want that, would they? It's well, just... Surely it's just the leftovers from your plate. Mind no. you, I, you have to say, £2.49, I thought of a Christmas sort of thing, I thought mm -hmm. they might have been charging five or six quid for it, so £2.49 oh. might not be too bad for a, for a Christmas treat. I think Waitrose are pretty clever, but I imagine we'll be seeing lots of other stores following suit. I personally will be buying it for my dog, though. That's the joke <laughs> of it. I, I've, li I've said here, this is stupid, this but is you'll mad. Get but you'll you'll get I will get be it. into Waitrose. Are you going to wrap it up? That's the question. Of course. You will. Of course. Amazing. Now, let's have a bit of a fashion shocker this morning, because we're used to seeing Katy Perry look like this, in the, or perhaps a modest outfit like this, but no, Ian, no. no. Look at her. How very nice and normal she looks. Well, I mean, I, I first like, the first time I looked at it, I thought, oh, God, Katie, you've gone all conservative on me. And But I actually really like the outfit on her. And I was just... Great. The reason <laughs> I kind of got a bit surprised by this story is uh, that they've given a big picture and a big spread to somebody who's dressed so beautifully. Mm. And uh, I think she looks really elegant and really lovely. And I don't need to see her dressed in the, the skimpy little dresses. I actually prefer that. I, I think that's mm. more attractive. So I think it's a really good story that the paper have done, that they've shown that Katie can look quite beautiful and quite quite conservative, very secretarial and um, business lady-like. It'll I keep think. us all guessing, though, because she was, she was at the Gordon Ramsay restaurant, wasn't she, with her yeah. on-off boyfriend, John Mayer. So oh, we, yeah. uh, we like think, it's slightly like it. shocking, though, that it makes news when somebody's actually covered up. Yeah. That makes me feel yeah. like that. Covered up. I No, I mean, that, that's just an average <laughs> that dress. Not, I like know. a burger. Well, it is. Yeah, uh, yeah, she looks much better like that than... And these ridiculous But outfits. you see, you wouldn't wear that to a Ramsey restaurant, would you? Well, that's well, that's, that's more your Nando's look. It's just amazing what there. scrutiny <laughs> these women come under. I think I it's know. unbelievable. Scary, isn't it? Look, we're out of time, but we shall see you both in an hour. Thank look you. Forward to